this recording works, what quality it is. Okay. Excellent. So coming to sitting as per usual. Oh, so nice to sit down. So many girls. The girls who got up, you need to sit back down again. Hands on knees. Let's just start by pressing the sitting bones down into the floor. Bring the right hand down to the right hand side and reach the left hand up high. And as you exhale, walk the right hand away and take the left arm overhead, keeping the left sitting bone down. And take a couple of breaths here into the side body. And then bring both hands down either side of the knee. Inhale as you look forward, which is the direction the knee is pointing in. And as you exhale, come into a fold. But again, you're keeping the sitting bones pressing down. See if you can find that gentle rise and fall through the rib cage, through the spine as you breathe. And then walking your hands around to centre, bring your chin to your chest, come into a forward bend. And walk your hands back in as you come up to centre. We're going to take left hand to the floor, right hand's going to rise. Get a nice stretch from one hand to the other. And then as you exhale, take the arm over the head. Maybe the left hand walks a little bit further away. Maybe the left elbow softens. Plant the right sitting bone down and take some deep breaths. And then bringing your hands down either side of that left knee, looking in the direction the knee is pointing. Inhale as you sit up and exhale, fold. Inhale as you walk your hands back around to centre, folding into a forward bend. And then walking your hands back in, we're going to take hands up overhead, interlink fingers, press palms high. And as you exhale, a little side stretch over to the right. Inhale back to centre, and exhaling over to the left. Well done. And then releasing the arms, take the left hand to the right knee, right hand behind you. Inhale as you sit up. And as you exhale, twist and turn. Feel free to take a little wriggle. And then sweeping the hands around to the other direction. So right hand comes to left knee. Left hand behind you, inhale as you sit up, and exhale as you rotate. And inhale as you come back to center, okay. So the practice is focusing on standing balances today. And that keeps you girls off the floor because I know the floor outside must be cold. So maybe coming up into a little down dog. Removing some layers. A little down dog, have a wriggle. And work one heel down and then the other heel down. Finding a bit of fluidity in your feet. And then you're going to drop your knees down to the floor. I hope you've got enough cushioning under your knees to sit back on your heels and stretch out the soles of your feet. There's Basil. Basil's joining yoga. 
What could possibly go wrong? Well done, stretching out the soles of the feet. And then you're going to turn, take the hands down to the floor and turn the fingers to point to the edges of the mats. So they're coming out 90 degrees. And then bringing them so they're pointing back towards the knees. So the fingers are pointing back towards your knees. And you're going to slowly move your sitting bones back towards your heels, stretching out through the arms. So balance poses that can either be on your feet or they can be on your sitting bones or they can be on your hands. Just depends, or on your head, of course. Just depends where your, where your point of contact, your foundation is. And then take the hands back so they're 90 degrees pointing out to the side. And then place them back down on the mat. Push through the hands and come back to a down dog. So lift the heels super high. We're going to warm our feet up properly. So take the heels over to the right. Turning your gaze to the left. Pushing through the right hand. Keeping the hips high. Inhaling back to centre. And exhaling, heels to the left, gazing to the right, pushing down through the left hand. So if you need heat, the best thing you can do is lift your pelvic floor muscles, so get Mula Bandha engaged, and breathe Ujjayi breath. That is where the heat comes from. Coming up to centre, both heels down to the floor. And looking forwards, slowly stepping your feet up to your hands, coming into a forward bend and exhaling into a deep forward bend. On your next inhale, soften your knees, reach your arms up overhead as you come all the way up. Keep your arms up high and just lift the heels off the floor so you're coming up to the balls of your feet. And bring your palms together above your head so you're really as tall as you can possibly be. And then slowly lower the heels. And then bring your arms down to your side. And you're going to lift all 10 toes. And take the little toe down. Just the second toe. Just the third toe. Just the fourth toe and then the big toe. And then lift the heels and come up high on the balls of your feet again. And slowly lowering your feet down. Lifting all 10 toes up. Just the little toe comes down. Second, third, fourth, and then big toe. Inhale as you reach your arms up high. And as you exhale, fold into a forward bend. Half lift as you inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to step back into a high plank. We're going to pause in high plank. Push the heels away. Move the heart forward. Soften the elbows and scoop the tummy up into the spine. Ujjayi breath. Softly drop the knees to the floor, lower the spine down, and inhale to a little baby cobra. Exhale as you come down. We're going to do that three times in three different ways. So for this next one, let the hands hover so they're not connecting to the floor. Push the pelvis into the floor. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale as you come down. Here comes the second version. So hands come on the floor. Inhale as you come up, perhaps it's a little bit of a more of a stretch than the very first one you did. Exhale as you come down. And then the third one will take intimidating cobra. So hands outside of mat, fingers to the floor. Shoulder blades slide down the back as you inhale and come up. And exhale as you come down. Hands to the floor, sit back on the heels, come through um, prayer pose. Inhale back to high plank and exhale to down dog. Pause for some deep, deep breaths.
When you're ready, traveling forwards on an inhale, folding on the exhale, and inhaling all the way up. Let's go a second time, a little bit faster. Exhale, forward bend. Deep inhale, half lift. If you're building up heat because you're outside, take your hands to the floor and hop your feet back. Hopefully you haven't had breakfast too recently. Lower yourself down through Chaturanga and inhale as you come up into Up Face Dog. Roll the feet back to Down Face Dog and take some breaths. And then dropping your knees to the floor, I want you to look at the screen because I just want to show you something. So we usually do a very easy version of Chaturanga, up face dog, down face dog. In fact, we take Cobra. But I want, because we're working with our feet, I want to show you what you could also be doing with your feet if it's not uncomfortable. So coming from high plank, you come down through Chaturanga, so coming about two thirds of the way down, and then your feet, if you look at my feet, I roll, onto the fronts of my feet. My knees are off the floor. And then I roll back to down face dog. So I don't always do that because it's not always the thing I want to do. But I think for today, why not play around with that? Okay, so we come back to down dog. On the inhale, look forward, step your feet to your hands. Exhale into a forward bend. And inhale as you come up. Exhale, hands to heart. We're gonna go third time. This time we're gonna roll the feet. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, half lift. You can either jump or step your feet back. Taking chaturanga. Roll onto the tops of your feet. Roll back to the balls of your feet. Five breaths. When you're ready, inhaling, step will hop your feet forwards and exhaling into a forward bend. And inhaling as you come up, reaching your arms up overhead, exhaling your hands to your side. We're going to come into Brixasana, the tree pose. So bringing your right knee up in front of you, circling your foot. Noticing how that feels and then taking the sole of the foot to the inner thigh or perhaps it's coming to the calf but avoiding, oh my god I so want to have a basil, bringing your hands to your heart, avoiding the knee so really it looks like your foot is on your knee, try and either have it up on the calf, on the thigh or on the calf. Well done. And then reach your arms up overhead. Keep your palms pressing together. See if you can move your ribcage up away from the floor. Well done. Keep the arms up. Bring that heel across so it's just above the knee. Come to seated chair pose. And maybe smile. And release and come back to standing. Just notice how your legs are feeling now. One side's worked a lot harder. It's actually the supporting side that's worked. So the left leg has worked harder than the right. I don't know if you can feel that. Okay, taking the weight to the right leg, bringing the left knee up, little circles in either direction. And then sole of foot comes to inner thigh. And reach your arms up overhead. Palms together. And it's, it's usual to be quite 
uh, wonky. It's not you, normally that you're not the same on both sides. Maybe the rib cage can lift a little higher from the floor or rather float up towards the sky. And then taking the foot across, seated chair pose, arms either side of ears. Square the left foot if you can, it just protects your ankle rather than letting it be twisted. Well done. And then releasing hands to the, not hands to the floor, feet to the floor. Notice how you feel now. So with your arms at your side, shoulders away from your ears, soles of feet on the floor. This is Tadasana pose, the mountain pose. And the amount of strength you can find from pressing down through the soles of the feet, how that is then reflected in Mulabanda is the pelvis lifts. It's the most grounded pose that there is. Easy to skip it. And you might notice as well, if you've got a hundred percent of awareness of the soles of your feet, where is the pressure? Where's the weight being held? So it's, it's normal for me to have about, I think there's probably about 60% of my weight, or maybe it's 70 on my right hand side, and maybe 30 or 40% on my left hand side. What's the story for you? Okay, and we're going to come into classical salutation. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, forward bend. Half lift as you inhale. And as you exhale, step the right leg back, soften the knee. Let's hover the knee and inhale as you reach your arms up. Bring your palms together overhead, squeezing the palms together and sink the hips a little lower. As you inhale, you're going to take yourself forwards into Virabhadrasana C. So the weight is going to move into your right foot. You're going to lift the left leg. Arms are still either side of your ears, palms pressing into one another. Obviously, I've got a door in the way. But if you don't, arms are straight. And take some breaths. Tempting for the right hip to lift. So try to rein that down again. And square the back foot. It helps with balance. Gently drop the back foot, returning to the lunge. Arms up high. Exhale, hands to the floor, stepping back. Traveling through Chaturanga, we're gonna roll our feet. Or not, if you don't want to, exhaling back. And the right leg's gonna rise, three-legged down dog. The knee's gonna bend and you're gonna swivel the hips. Inhaling back to three-legged down dog. And exhaling, foot comes forward. Back knee softens so you can come up into the lunge. Palms together. Just find your breath. And then when you're ready, you're going to take your weight forward onto that right foot. Keep the arms either side of the ears as the left foot rises. Square that back foot. Draw the left hip down towards the earth. Inhale, returning to the lunge. Hands to the floor, stepping your feet together. Inhaling all the way up. Exhale, straight down into a forward bend. Half lift. Exhale, this time the left leg leads. So it comes back, arms rise, palms come together. Exhale, Virabhadrasana C. Inhale, returning to the lunge. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, Chaturanga. Rolling the feet. Rolling the feet back. Left foot rises, three-legged down dog. 
Swivel the hips, bend the top knee. Three-legged down dog. Lift the gaze, step the foot forward. Arms rise, coming into the lunge as you inhale. Palms are together, exhale, moving onto that left foot. Right leg rises. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, hands to the floor, feet together. Half lift. Exhale, forward bend. Coming all the way up. Seated chair pose. Take a nice deep inhale. Exhale, forward bend. Half lift. Exhale, stepping back, chaturanga. Inhale, up face dog or cobra. Exhale, down face dog. Left foot turns, the right foot steps forward. Now we're starting to build heat. Bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands to the floor, stepping back, chaturanga. Inhale, up face dog. Exhale, down face dog. Right foot turns, left foot forwards. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, hands to the floor, stepping back. Chaturanga. Up face dog. Down face dog. Five breaths. Inhaling, hop or step your feet forwards. Exhaling, forward bend. Bend the knees, come down low. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale to standing. Well done, let's go again. Get the heat building. Inhale, arms up. Deeper breath, deeper practice. Forward bend. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you step back, traveling to the floor. Rolling up as you inhale. Rolling back as you exhale. Left foot turns, right foot forwards. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling, hands to the floor, stepping back, traveling down. Inhale. Exhale, right foot turns, left foot forwards. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Deeper breath. Next, inhale, look forward, either hop or step your feet to your hands. Exhale, forward bend. Bend the knees as you come up, seat your chair pose. Exhale to standing. And we're gonna add some more moves, some more bounces to the sequence. Seat your chair pose as you inhale. Exhale, forward bend. Half lift. Exhaling back. Inhaling forwards, exhaling back. Left foot turns, right foot steps forward. Inhale, Virabhadrasana A. 
Exhale, Virabhadrasana B. Straighten the front leg. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, lean to the right, take your arm down, reach the left hand up. We'll pause for some breaths here. So you can lift your heart a little higher. Maybe you can take your breath a little deeper. Okay, looking down at your right big toe, shift the weight forwards. We're going to come into standing um, half moon. Squaring the back foot gives you balance. Fixing your, your gaze on a point gives you balance. Lifting Mula Bandha gives you balance. You might even want to explore bringing your arms either side of your ears, palms together here. Returning to half moon. Returning to trikonasana. Windmill your hands down to the floor. Take the vinyasa. And now the right foot turns, the left foot comes forward. Inhaling, rear Vajrasana A. Exhaling, rear Vajrasana B. Straighten the front leg as you inhale. And exhale, Trikonasana. Can you hear the sound of your breath? Can you make it a little deeper? Anna, lift your heart. Come up higher through your heart, even if that means your hand's not as low. So you feel this opening in your heart space. Well done. Turn your gaze down to the big toe, coming onto that left leg for half moon. Maybe bringing your arms either side of your ears, taking your palms together, if that doesn't feel too insane. Stepping back into Trikonasana. Windmill your hands, stepping back. Vinyasa. Five breaths in down dog. And we're going to scoot straight into another variation of balances. So left leg, left foot turns, right foot comes forward. Inhale as you come up, Virabhadrasana A. And exhale, Virabhadrasana B. Keeping that front knee bent, take a reverse as you inhale. Make it quite a dramatic pose. And then exhale, bring your hands down to the inside of the foot, reaching the left arm up and over. over. So we're in side angle, we go here most weeks. So your body's pretty familiar with it. Can your hips drop a little lower? And can you lift that top shoulder so you're looking at the ceiling rather than looking at the floor? Sometimes that top arm just actually becomes a bit of a distraction, so you can always bring it to your waist. And then that gives you the clarity to be able to turn the rib cage so the left shoulder moves back and you look up at the ceiling. And then dropping the shoulder super low down the inside of your knee. Take your hand, the bottom arm around, and see if you can catch hold of your wrists with your hands. So you're coming into the bind. You also breathe deeply whilst you're here. And 
and then releasing, straighten the front leg, reach the left arm up, and go straight from here into a windmill, stepping back, vinyasa. And now the right foot turns, the left foot steps forward. Virabhadrasana A. Opening your arms wide, Virabhadrasana B. See if you can drop the hips down. There's usually masses more movement than we give ourselves to begin with. Inhale, take a reverse, keeping the hips low. And as you exhale, taking your hand down to the inside of the foot, reaching the left arm up and over. Some breaths here in side angle. Well done. Perhaps the hand comes to the waist. So you can focus on lifting up through the right rib cage, the right shoulder, looking up at the ceiling. And then maybe the left shoulder can drop a little lower. So you really dip quite low. And then you take that left arm underneath you, coming to meet your right hand behind you. And breathe. Inhaling, straighten the front leg, reach that top arm back up again. Windmill the hands and come back to close the vinyasa. Wriggle as much as you need to in down dog. So when we do these faster moving practices, down dog, we go, <laughs> is everything okay, Ruth? She's got a basil on her. Down dog becomes the place where you get your breath back. So use it. This is like your store, your, your stockpile for the next sequence that we're going to go into. You get your breath back. Okay, inhale. Look forward, step your feet to your hands. Exhale into a forward bend. Bend the knees, come down low. Inhale as you reach your arms up. And exhale, back to Tadasana. I wonder what happened to Kirsten. Okay, arms either side of your ears. Breathing deeply. Now find the soles of your feet. Bring your awareness down to the soles of your feet. And just notice how the division of weight is being spread. So it might have changed. For me now, the left foot is way more taking control. And the right foot slightly floating. Okay, and we're going to take your weight to your left foot, bring your right knee up. Bring the arm inside the knee and catch hold of the big toe. Left hand can come to your waist. So first you want to get this pillar of strength happening right the way from the sole of your foot up to the crown of your head. This is your pillar that's going to stay strong. You're not going to let it wiggle or wriggle or collapse. You're gonna roll that left shoulder back and roll the right shoulder back. Take a nice long inhale. And as you exhale, you're gonna push that foot, the right foot forwards, holding onto the toe. And we're gonna breathe deeply here. Keep the right hip dropping towards the earth. Again, it's another pose where the hip loves to jump up. So just pull it back down towards the earth and soften the right shoulder out to the outside and roll the right shoulder back. A deep breath really fortifies you here. And Mula Bandha. As you exhale, come into a forward bend so you're moving towards your toe. Okay. 
and then inhale as you come back up. Release the foot, bend the knee, place the knees together, like so. Right hand comes back to catch hold of the right foot. Knees are together, hips press forwards. So this is already giving you a really nice stretch down through the thigh. And still you have this beautiful column of strength that goes from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. Reach the left arm up, bring the thumb and forefinger together. And as you exhale, kick the foot into the hand and you might find that you lean forward slightly. So one temptation is for the knee to kind of jump out to the side. Try to keep it in line with the other knee rather than letting it spiral outwards. Dancer's pose. And then releasing the foot, we're not bringing the foot to the floor yet. We're going to take the foot forwards in front of you and wrap it around the left. We come into Garuda, left elbow forwards, right over the top, palms come together. Everything squeezes. The elbows press forward to let you breathe into the back of your heart. Fortifying yourself with deep breath and then releasing and coming back to standing on both feet. Tadasana, just notice, when I say Tadasana, I always kind of want to go, Tadasana, <laughs> so Tadasana, feeling both feet on the floor. How has the weight distribution changed? So now taking the weight to the right foot, bring the left knee up. Little circle just to relieve any tension that might have crept in. Hand to your waist. Find the pillar of strength. Bring your arm inside the knee, catch hold of the big toe. Both shoulders roll back away from the ears. And tummy pulls in towards the spine. As you exhale, push the foot forwards and maybe soften the elbow out to the side. The leg does not need in any way to be straight. Softening the elbow out to the side, come into a forward bend. Inhale as you come back up. Release the foot, bring the knees together. Catch hold of the foot with the left arm. Find Mula Bandha, find this strength through the core, reach the right arm up overhead, thumb and forefinger together. Watch the knee doesn't swing out to the side. As you exhale, kick the foot back into the hand, lean a little forward. Alex, especially you with your super flexible hips, it's really important to bring the knee in so it stays in the midline. Well done. Inhale as you come back. Bring that knee forward, wrap the leg around. Right elbow forward, left over the top. Palms come together and everything squeezes. Releasing, bring your both feet down to the floor. How do the soles of the feet feel now? Okay, we're going to step our feet wide apart. And I'm going to suggest coming towards the uh, edge of the mat because we're going to come forward and eventually bring our heads down to the floor, which I know it sounds like it's impossible, but it actually is possible. So bring your hands to your waist, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale as you lift your heart. And as you exhale, come into a forward bend, taking your hands down to the floor. 
they don't need to be in line with your feet, just bring them to the floor. And then from here, you might be able to walk your feet a little wider. And then start to lean and see if you can get your head, the crown of your head to touch the floor directly between your hands. So see if you can bring your head to the floor directly between your feet. You have your feet wide apart, bring your hands to the floor, Ruth. Well done. There we go. And then just lean forwards and you can bring your head towards the floor. Because your hands are catching you. If the foot, if the head is on the floor there, your elbows are going to be bent 90 degrees. Just bring your knees and touch them on top of your elbows. And then as you press down through your hands, see if you can lift your feet up off the floor. Maybe bringing your toes together. So we're coming into a bit of a head balance. And this is all play. And then if you like a headstand, you can then straighten your legs up into a headstand, but only if there's no furniture to fall on or another person to fall on. Well done. Well done, everyone. Okay, and then bring your hands to your waist again as you straighten your legs and come all the way back up. And we're going to take our arms and give our hands a shake. Shake out the hands. Hands really love to be shaken. Well done. Open your arms wide to the side. Take the palms together behind your back and come into reverse breath. And then roll the shoulder blades back. You're gonna to turn to face the short edge of the mat. Perhaps your feet are gonna come a tiny bit closer. As so we come into a little sequence that includes pyramid, and this is where we're gonna begin. So press down through the back foot, press equally through the front foot. Lift the rib cage, inhale as you lift your gaze. And as you exhale, come into a forward bend, looking at your big toe. Shift the weight into that front foot as you inhale and lift through the back foot. Inhale to open your arms wide so you're coming through to aeroplane. And then sweep your arms either side of your ears, palms facing one another, Virabhadrasana seat. Left hand is going to come down to the floor just in front of the right foot. Right arm is going to lift towards the ceiling or the sky and you're going to twist. Again, the back foot might want to square, that sometimes helps for balance. Drop the back foot down to the floor. Sweep that front hand to the little toe edge of the right foot and we're coming into a rotated pyramid. Inhale as you come all the way up. You're going to step to that right foot and bring the left leg up in front of you. Hands to your waist, pointing the toe. And then you're going to take the right hand to catch hold of the left foot and extend the leg out as you reach the left arm back. You can always hold the knee if you're feeling wobbly. Well done. Keep breathing. Whatever shape you're throwing. Okay. 
okay. Bring your hands down to the floor, lift that left leg up high. So you're doing a little version of standing splits. And then bring your feet together into a little down dog. The right foot can stay on the floor as the left foot starts to become the pendulum. And you swing it backwards and forwards. Look just ahead of your hands and start to hop with the right leg. So you're coming into little bunny hops or handstand versions. So standing balance on your hands. Well done. Well done. And then everyone okay? Anna, you look like you were flying then. You didn't, good. Okay, so bringing your hands to your waist, softly come back up to standing. We're gonna do all of that sequence to the other side because it was so much fun, right? So shake your hands. Feet wide apart, not that wide, middle wide apart. Then we'll shake and shake and shake and shake and shake. Unless you've never had any stress this week, then don't bother shaking. The best somatic way to get rid of stress, shaking. Okay. And actually just pause for a minute and just feel what's going on in your hands from the shaking. And we're going to turn to face the other end of the mat. Bring your palms together in reverse prayer behind you. Weight through the back foot, weight through the front foot. Inhale as you lift your ribs. Exhale, forward bend. Looking at your big toe. Shift the weight into the left foot as you reach the right leg up high behind you. Flying angel, square that back foot. Drop the right hip down towards the floor. Open the arms out to the side. Take the right hand down in front of the left hand, reach the left hand high, taking a rotation. Well done. Slowly lower the back foot. Let the front hand come to the little toe edge of the front foot as you come into a rotated pyramid. Inhale, reach your arms out in front of you. We're going to come up through Virabhadrasana C. And then sweeping that back leg forward, taking it out in front of you, hands to your waist, pointing the toe. Maybe see if you can get it just a touch higher. But try not to lean back, cat. I can see there's a bit of leaning backage happening, which I understand, but try not to. Okay, take the left hand across, catch hold of the foot and extend the leg as the right hand moves out behind you. You're nearly done everyone, keep breathing. Hopefully you're not cold outside anymore. And then release the foot, take the hands down to the floor, reach, the right leg up, so you're coming into a little standing splits. And then bring the 
little foot down, come to a mini little down dog. The left foot stays grounded, the right leg becomes the pendulum, and the left leg becomes the hop. As you come into little handstands, you're gazing just ahead of your fingers. You're not looking back to the back of the room, you're looking up the front, near your fingertips, just ahead of your fingertips. Move your gaze, Ruth, look forwards a bit. Well done. So you're looking ahead of your hands. Well done. Very good. And then dropping to your knees, laying your forehead on the floor, wrapping your arms around you as you come into child's pose. So girls outside, make sure you've got jumpers on because we're going to stop jumping around quite so much. We don't want you to get cold. You want to keep the warmth in your body. Well done. And we're going to come and lie down on our tummies because we're going to go into Salambasana. So to begin with, you're going to lie on your tummy with your arms either side of you. Fingertips pulling back towards heels. The pelvis is the pivot. Well done. And then your fingertips glide in the direction of your heels. Your shoulders will automatically roll back away from your ears as they do that. Press down through the, the pubic bone and lift the feet, lift the chest, lift the gaze to just ahead of the mat. You're not yanking your neck up. You're just looking sort of gracefully just ahead of you and take some breaths. You're still looking down at the earth. Your eyes aren't lift, looking up the horizon yet. Exhale as you come down. Bring your forehead to the floor. And you can either repeat this a second time or take your arms either side of your ears out in front of you, palms facing one another. And again, the pubic bone is the pivot, so press the pelvis down. As you inhale, feet lift, chest lifts, arms lift. And this time the gaze might look up to the horizon a little bit more. Keep the arms at your side if there's any hint of a tweak going on in your back. Well done. And then lower yourself down, make a little nest with your arms and lay your forehead or turn your head to one side and let yourself become super heavy. And then turn your head to the other side and just notice how that feels. Then we're going to come back up to sitting. So bring your hands either side of your chest, push down through your hands, sit back on your heels. You get a little bit of a prayer pose as you stretch your arms out. And then you're going to come back to sitting. So legs are going to come out in front of you. Toes are going to point upwards. Inhale as you bring the right knee in towards you. Sole of foot comes to inner thigh, knee drops out to the side. It's quite a nice place to put a cushion. Does make a difference. Undo your knee if that's something you want to do. Inhale as you reach your arms up. And as you exhale, you come forwards into a forward bend. When you're ready, inhale as you come back up. Bring that knee up to centre. Take the foot across so it just comes over to the left-hand side. And then you can keep this leg straight. That's the easier version. Or you can bend the bottom leg and tuck the, he the, the heel in towards the sitting bone. Hold onto your knee. The left arm rises. And as you exhale, the left elbow comes across. Right hand comes behind. Turning your gaze and breathing deeply.
Inhale as you come back to center. Keep that um, the right heel, which is over on the left hand side now. Move it back so that you can stack your knees one on top of the other. And again, cushion is handy because you can just place that between your heels and sit holding onto your toes. Taking some breaths. The left arm is going to rise as you exhale, bend the elbow. And the right arm is going to come up behind you, bringing the hands towards one another. Inhale, and as you exhale, come into a forward bend. Inhale as you come back up. Remove the cushion if you're using a cushion. And unravel the legs. Taking them straight out, give them a shake. And then tap the outer edges of the legs. Up and down. Okay, and then you're going to bend the left knee, take the sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Right toes are pointing up. Inhale as you sit up. And exhale as you come forward into a forward bend. Inhale as you come back up. Knee comes up, foot comes across to the other side. Leg can stay straight or it can bend and the heel can tuck in. Right arm rises as you inhale and as you exhale, take the elbow across, left hand behind you. Rotate and breathe. Inhaling as you come back. We're going to let that left heel edge back towards the right sitting bone. Knees stack one on top of the other. Taking hold of your feet, your big toes, sitting up nice and strong. And then right arm lifts. Elbow bends to come down between the shoulder blades. Left hand comes. Fingers draw towards one another. Inhale. And as you exhale, come into a forward bend. Inhaling as you come back up. Releasing the legs. Taking them straight out, giving them a shake. We're going to open the legs out wide to the side and tap the inner edges. Don't get too hard, it can be a little bit sensitive. This is our final pose. Toes pointing upwards. Inhale as you reach your arms up. And as you exhale, take your hands to the floor and walk your hands forwards, chin towards chest. And then inhale as you come back up. Soles of feet can come together. Hold on to the toes, let the knees bounce. We're not going to come into a shavasana or anything because Alex and Heather will get freezing if we do that. So um, if you want to take the shavasana, then I highly recommend putting your legs up against the wall 
and lying down on your back, but otherwise, we're done. Namaste, everyone. And welcome, Kirsten. Thank <laughs> you.